Hey guys, okay, so first of all, happy Friday. Um, I'm actually doing a little bit of work on updating the existing dance block for one of our customers. And so also recently we got an email from Cam Creative asking us if we could show them how to create, let's say a dark hat or a witch's hat on top of a dart in Adobe Illustrator, you know, additional pattern cutting. And because I'm working on this block and it has got quite a large dart, I figured I could just tag it on to the work that I'm doing and obviously show you guys how to do this. And it's a pretty straightforward, simple tutorial. We shouldn't take more than about 15 minutes to kind of complete. Anyway, so first of all, let's get started. Okay, so let's just grab one of these dance blocks really quickly. I'm just gonna copy this and let's just paste this down here. Okay, fantastic. Also, let's just make this really simple, this block. So I'm just gonna grab the most important points here. So mainly not the points, but just the actual, let's say guidelines and the outline of the block. Let's copy, let's paste that here. Let's also tidy this block up a little bit. I'm gonna speed this process up just so you don't have to watch me do the whole thing. And I'm also going to create a few different dart variations here just so I can show you how to do this at various different points or in various different dart manipulations. Okay, so let's begin. First of all, let's start off with, let's say the most common one, which is let's say the side neck dart point. Okay, so let's, uh, so a, let's say a, a dark cap or a witch's hat is essentially when we close these two seams here, what seam allowance do we need in order for that dart to lie evenly across this shoulder seam, in other words to be included in the shoulder seam? Because if we take a line straight across here when we closed it, we would lose a little bit of seam allowance or have a little bit too much seam allowance. So it's really simple. First of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my line tool. So I'm going to get my line tool here. I'm just going to click and drag across from this point to this point. And if I click off, you can see that it finds the middle location. So it's still selected, but it finds that middle point there. And then going to go from the center of my dart, click and drag with the line tool up until I find that center point. And you can see the intersect sign in pink there. Let's then get our small selection tool. I'm going to go to the ink dropper or eyedropper tool. I'm going to simply select this dashed line to give this the attributes of that line. Looking good. I'm also going to go to object. Let's go select all object and then lock selection. And now I'm going to get my pen tool and let's get a highlight color. Let's go for a nice pink or something. That's quite a heavy pink. Let's go for something a little bit softer. Click OK. And let's just get a line tool or a line width of about three so you can see this clearly. Now what I'm going to do is obviously I can't put my uh, dart seam allowance into my neckline because obviously it would show in the neckline so it has to go into the shoulder which means I'm going to start on this side so I'm going to click on this point I'm just drawing here with the pen tool so let's go to the pen tool here it's going to click on this point click on that center point go all the way down to the dart point and then click back up so we have a unique or item or one whole item I'm just going to take off that dash fill three perfect okay so essentially what we do now is I'm going to go to my rotation tool I'm going to click on that rotation point. I'm going to take this edge and then click and drag and rotate it until this line here, which we originally drew, hit, ends up at this line here. So essentially we're closing that dart, but not in real life. We're obviously just closing that in Adobe Illustrator or digitally. Now you can see that if we were to close this dart, this is how much extra seam allowance will show on top of that shoulder line. Now essentially you could always just trim that off when you did your pattern, but at the same time it's easier for us just to create this uh, dart cap. So with this selected, I'm then going to get my plus anchor point tool and I'm just going to simply create a little plus point just there, just where the shoulder intersects that line. I'm going to go to my minus tool and then minus it. And then get my big section tool. So now this is flush with the shoulder. Select that item, go to the rotation tool, click rotate at the bust point, click and rotate that back to where it used to be. And now you can see that this is the kind of formula or the, the shape that we're gonna have for our dark cap. In fact, this is not a cap, this is an inverted cap, but that's fine. Then gonna use my plus anchor point tool. I'm just gonna plus anchor or plus a point here. Get my small selection tool find that point, click on it, and then drag it up to the opposite shoulder. And this will mirror exactly what we've just created. It's the simplest way of doing this. So now you can see this is going to be our dark cap. So now I can get my small selection tool, because I want to trace this off. Small selection tool, I'm going to get my scissor tool, and just snip and snip. Get my small selection tool, click on this lower element, hit backspace on my keyboard a few times, and now I can add this dart to my block. So once again, 
I'm going to use object and then unlock all. That allows me to access my pattern. I'm going to use my scissor tool. I'm going to snip here and snip here. That then removes the dart from the outside of the pattern. So then with my small section tool, I'm going to click on these dart legs. And then let's go to the line options. I'm going to make that one. I'm also going to give it a dashed line, but I'm going to make this, let's say, 30 by 10. And then we can see that's a different line to our guidelines, which is looking good. So now I can actually remove that little line there. I can also get my small section tool, click and drag that line down. And if I get my small section tool, click and drag over all three of these and go object and then lock selection. That then allows me to select these two endpoints. Big small selection tool. Just going to click and drag, right click, join. Click and drag, right click, join. And there we have our outline of our pattern. And it's pink, we want to make this black. So I'm just going to select this outline, go to my uh, stroke, double click, go to black, make that a black fill, and then we can add seam allowance to this. So we just go object. So select the outline with your small selection tool, select the outline, then go object. Let's go to path, offset path. And here we can make it one centimeter. Don't worry about miter limit and click OK. Now I can then, small section tool, click on the inside of this line. Let's make this one. And we can make the outside, let's make that two. And that is how we add, uh, let's say, the witch's cap or the dark cap or inverted dark cap to our actual, uh, let's say, bodice block or torso block. And that's obviously with the side neck point dart. The concept's exactly the same with, let's say, a French dart. So let's try that now. So once again, I'm just going to get my big line tool, or get my line tool. So click and drag from one endpoint to the other. I'm going to go to my, and obviously we see that intersection point. I'm going to go to my bus point, click and drag with that line till it intersects. Small selection tool, click and drag, eyedropper tool, get the, uh, pick up those line fills. So it's dashed in one point. And next, so this depends. I either go down or I go up. So if you want your dart to be up, in other words, you want your dart to fold upwards, then we want to start off with this quadrant here. If you want your dart to go downwards, then we start, up, start off with the upper quadrant. So first of all, I'm just going to select everything, and I'm going to lock that down. If you want some shortcuts, Command A on your keyboard selects everything, and then Command 2 locks everything. And if you want to unlock, you go shift option, sorry, command option or command alt and then two and then unlocks it all as well. Okay, so I'm going to take my dart down. So I'm going to get my pen tool. Let's also get a nice pink fill again. Where was it? Let's go to roughly about here. I don't know, I'm not, not worried too much about that color. Let's make that three so you can see it. So I'm going to go down. So I'm going to start off at the top quadrant. So I'm going to click on this point, go to my bus point, click on the half of the dart and click on this dart as well. Let's remove that dashed line. Great. Next, big selection tool, get my rotation tool, click on the bus point, rotate, click on this line and rotate that down. Next, what I'm going to do is get my small selection tool, I'm going to click and drag, and I'm going to be very careful. You see how that it goes hyper pink? And the reason why is because we, we're basically dragging through that line. Okay, if I go off it, it's not hyper pink. If I go up to it, it's hyper pink. So I'm going to drag that out. Then get my small section tool, click on that point again, and then drag it in until it intersects this side seam and obviously that hyper pink. Let's get my big section tool, click on that item, go to rotation tool, click on that point there, and then I'm going to get this point and drag this back. Sorry, I'm going to get on this point here and drag that back to its original location. Once again, plus anchor point, just add anywhere on that line, get your small selection tool, click and drag out. And there we have our lovely uh, witch's cap. And this time it's, it's the right way, it's not inverted. Going to get rid of that little cross line, extend this out, select this object, go to my scissor tool, snip, snip, get my small selection tool, delete those lines, get the outline of my block, get the scissor tool, snip and snip to separate that dart away from the body of the block. I can then get my eyedropper tool. Let's select that. Oops, sorry. Okay, it's still connected, that's fine. Select this item, it is still connected. Not sure why though. Let's just ungroup this. Select that line again, let's go to the eyedropper and it's doing it again, not sure why, that's okay. Okay, is it this point? This point, so why is it doing the same thing? That's okay, you know what, I'm just gonna do it here. <laughs> okay, it's playing with me today and I'm not sure why. All right, what I wanna do is, I'm just gonna lock everything down, I'm gonna hit my pen tool, I'm gonna redraw that dart because it's being a pain. And then let's get to my eyedropper tool. Let's select that. We've already got it selected. That's great. Let's unlock everything. That's my dart. 
I'm going to get rid of this one. Let's snip, snip. Snip that, get rid of that point. We want to keep that one, get my big section tool, find the end point of this, click and drag this up. You shouldn't have to do this. It's weird that that was doing that for me. It's very, very odd indeed. But that's okay. We're going to continue on. We're going to soldier on. Okay, so next what I'm going to do is small section tool, click on this end point, hold down the shift key, click on this line, click on that end point, right click, join. Or once again, you can select all of this. You can lock it, and then you can select these two objects, or you're free to select these two objects with your small selection tool. Oh, then we go right click, join. And once again, eyedropper tool, to select the outline. Eyedropper's not playing ball today. And then we can now add seam allowance to this. A small selection tool, object, path, offset path. It should already be set to one, which it is. Let's cancel that because it's giving me a joint. It's giving me two outline paths here. Object, path. If you get two paths here, it means that your item is not completely sealed. So let's go to Pathfinder and let's unite that block. And now when we do it, object, path, offset path, if it doesn't do it, okay, it does, good. As I said, it's probably a little bit tired, this computer, because it's very early in the morning. You can probably tell it my voice as well. Okay, great, so that is how we uh, do it for the French start. We can do it for this one as well, pretty much the same concept. So let's just lock everything down, get my line tool, I'm gonna do this quite quickly, click and drag. I'm not gonna go through the uh, directions, because you've already got them. Let's click and drag, oops, I'm rushing this. Okay, so that's our center point. Let's grab our line tool, click and drag, find that center point. Let's lock all that down. I'm gonna go, I can't go up. Well, I could go up actually. In fact, let's go up just to make this really interesting. So let's go up. I'm gonna get my pen tool. So this can fall into your armhole. I wouldn't, into your armhole. I wouldn't recommend it because I'm just gonna make it a very clumpy armhole, but let's do it just to show you the concept. So next I'm going to, because I'm going up, I'm gonna use the lower quadrant. So click, click, click and then click. Let's make this three, let's remove the dashed line. Let's then rotate it to get the rotation point here. Let's click and drag this up. Now you can see that all of this, uh, let's say dark cap is gonna be in my armhole, which is not great, but that's okay. What I wanna do is let's zoom in. I'm going to get my, I'm gonna get my scissor tool and I'm gonna snip here and here. Get my small selection tool, I'm gonna to remove this top piece. And so now I'm gonna retrace that line. So get my pen tool, I'm gonna to click on this point click on this point and then I'm just going to click and drag to create that curve. And that looks pretty decent. You'll have to play around with that curve a little bit because the anchor point tool can be a little bit tricky. So once you have that created, let's go to your rotation tool, click on that point there. Let's get this line. No, no, sorry, wrong one. Let's get this line because this is the dart leg we're closing. Let's close that. And now, okay, we're gonna actually have to reflect this because I can't just take a point like this and then just move it up there because obviously it's not gonna be correct. So now what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to instead reflect this. So I'm gonna, big section tool, click on this item. I'm gonna right click and then let's go transform, reflect, and we're gonna go horizontally, click copy. Okay, so now I'm gonna grab this point here. I'm gonna chuck it to my bus point. I'm gonna get my rotation tool, click on that point, click on this line and drag it up until it meets the other, so it's basically mirrored. And that is gonna be our new, let's say, dart uh, shaping here for going into this armhole. Once again, don't recommend it in the armhole, but I'm just showing you because it's quite an interesting concept. And now what we can do is, uh, we can simply, small section tool, grab these two items, go to our Pathfinder, let's unite those, so it's one item. And now, let's unlock everything. I'm gonna drag this guideline down to that point. I'm gonna get rid of this line here. I'm also going to snip this one so get my small section tool, select that line, go to my scissor tool, which is C on your keyboard, click, click. And then here I can just delete those dart legs because I've separated it from that dart. And with my body, let's hope this works this time, I'm gonna select my small section tool, get my scissor tool or C on your keyboard, click and click here to snip that dart away from the main body. And then here I'm just gonna turn that into Let's go one, let's make a dashed line, let's make it, what was it, 20 and 10, I think it was. I think it was 30 and 10. Yeah, that's great. And then I'm just gonna get my small section tool, click on this outline here so I can find the point. Click on that point, hold down the shift key, select this line here, click on that point. And also these aren't quite joined, or they're not quite, they're not in the same location, so I'm gonna hold my right click, and then average, okay for both, right click, join. 
Perfect. And then I can go to my Unite tool or my Pathfinder and then click Unite. Fantastic. And then let's just make this a black outline, like so. And now let's zoom out. And once again, small section tool, click and drag, object, path, offset path, one centimeter, click OK. And then we'll make this inner one that thin one line and we'll make the outer one there we go, that two point line. Okay, and there you have it. Now essentially, the Pathfinder, or sorry, the Seamalouts doesn't necessarily always work when it comes to these little points here. You might want to extend this by one centimeter, and you can do that. Let's just simply get a line. Let's click and drag a line from here to here. Let's go Object, and then Path, Offset Path, one centimeter, click OK, and as you can see here, we've kind of created a little, uh, little add-on for this line here. And what I'll do is, let's go to my scissor tool. I'm gonna to snip this point here and this point here. Get my small section tool, select this block, hit delete. I can then, this is my existing line, let's get rid of that. This is my outline of my pattern, I can then snip it here and here with my scissor tool. Get rid of that line. I can then, small section tool, click and drag over these two endpoints and then join. Click and drag, join. And if I want to be really snazzy to make this perfect, get my plus anchor point tool. I'm just going to try and follow that line through, add a point here follow that line through, add a point about here, get your minus tool, minus, minus, and maybe this one's a little bit low, but you get the concept. Okay, so that's pretty much how we create a, uh, let's say a dark cap or an inverted dark cap or witch's cap or whatever you want to call it. If you really enjoyed this tutorial, don't forget we have a whole bunch of free tutorials and courses on pattern cutting in Adobe Illustrator, which is completely free to watch both on YouTube and on our website. We also provide a whole bunch of made to measure digital sewing patterns on our patternlab.london website, link in the top corner right now. Also, uh, we have a whole bunch of, let's say, nested digital basic blocks that come in packs, sizes UK 4 to 24. All of these will work fantastically with this tutorial, so please feel free to check those out. A link for those in the top corner as well. Also, last thing, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications when it comes to uh, our YouTube channel. Obviously, we don't, want any, we don't want you to miss out on any future fantastic content. Uh, it's really important that you do that. Um, in the meantime, thank you so much for watching. Have a fantastic Friday, and I will see you in the next tutorial. Take care.